I feel optimistic going forward. I feel that uh, what I heard today addressed some concerns that uh, I think our residents have had uh, regarding the project, but the, the universe is lining up in that the steel prices are flat, uh, the construction industry is, is still recovering, and, and uh, the, the, it appears that the City of Victoria is going to benefit from the economic downturn that we, that we are currently in, in the, in the uh, production of this bridge. Well, I think we are, we are from what we've heard from um, our team, is that we're getting very competitive bidding. We're getting, uh, we're not, the, the risk mitigation seems to be falling a little bit lower. It's still medium to high, but we're feeling more confident that uh, uh, we're, we're getting the best possible people approaching this project, um, given the, the, the downturn. Well, I think we are, we are from what we've heard from um, our team is that we're getting very competitive bidding. We're getting, uh, we're not, the, the risk mitigation seems to be falling a little bit lower. It's still medium to high, but we're feeling more confident that uh, uh, we're, we're getting the best possible people approaching this project. Um, given the, the, the downturn. There was a lot of discussion at the end about green space and, and, and I appreciate that uh, as a resident myself uh, it, it speaks to our quality of life and how that bridge will be enjoyed and the connections and uh, we are a, a walking city, a walkable city and, and a pedestrian and cycling city and I think it's very important that we address those issues now so that it's not, a, it's not an afterthought, that we're, it's actually integral to the project. So I would encourage the public to continue to, to uh, let us know what their thoughts are and, and, and to look at the, the, what came out of those open houses because the staff have listened and that's what I saw today and that's comforting to know that they are paying attention to what the customers who live in, and breathe those connections every day and they're, they're being heard. In my mind the, the biggest risk uh, obviously is cost. We, we don't have firm estimates yet. Uh, we, we think that we'll probably be able to come in uh, under or pretty close to the kind of budget we'd set aside. If we don't achieve that, obviously, then we're going to have to, to well, some of us will be thinking, thinking again about, about where we are with this thing. But I guess, I guess in one sense we'll cross that bridge when we come to it, so to speak. There was a lot of, there was a lot of discussion about the details of the bridge approaches and the landscaping. I'm, as a bicyclist and pedestrian, I'm, I'm very concerned about uh, the linkages for pedestrians and bicycles. Uh, will it be convenient to travel uh, between the uh, north and south and as well as east-west? And will we get the connections under the bridge for pedestrians uh, from one side to the other and easy connections for bicycles from one, one side to the other? And, and there are a few issues. One of them is uh, we don't have the money in this budget to put a connection underneath the bridge, which I think on the east side, which I think we will need. I have a few concerns about the linkages east-west for bicycles as well. We got ourselves into a situation where we've designed a bridge, we got it approved, people saw the wheels, and now we're, we're trying to get people to build it. And in retrospect, and uh, I must admit I, I had never been totally enthusiastic about the concept of a new bridge, but I think maybe we could have said, we've got 41 meters of water to cross. We want to get two lanes of traffic and uh, some bike paths across it. What, do you, what are your ideas? Come forward with a plan for a design for the bridge and a cost. And then we could choose between maybe the cheap, ugly bridge and the expensive, pretty bridge. And, and that might have been a different way to do it. We decided not to go that way. So we've got to make sure that we've got a meeting of the minds between the bridge designers and the bridge builders. Well, I think different people, different councillors and different members of the public will have different reactions. I think some councillors will say, oh gosh, I really want this. We've got, to, um, uh, we've got to build it. We've got to find the money. Others might say, gosh, you know, we couldn't build it for the price. We are already more than we thought it was going to be by quite a bit. Why don't we think about some of the other options? Why don't we go back to the idea, well, uh, what, are, what are your ideas, builders? Uh, how much would you charge to build maybe a bridge of your own design? Or even, gosh, how much would it cost to refurbish the existing bridge, the one bridge that remains, and maybe build a new span for uh, bicycles and pedestrians beside it? Well, uh, 
the reason why I attended it is because uh, I'm interested in all of the risks that are facing this project. There's, a, uh, as they said, about 90 of them, and uh, some of them are new. Some of them have been identified as high risks, and uh, I wanted to see what they have to say about that. The, the estimate uh, of $92.8 million is not quite right. And the other one is that there may be some uh, disputes between the contractors and the designers of the bridge over how the mechanism is going to work and how much it's going to cost to build. You know, the design is coming from an architecture firm that these construction firms have had no connection with until now. And uh, I'm sure the engineering firms have their own ideas about how they uh, would like to see the bridge built and what kinds of things could be done to bring the cost down and uh, that the architects are, uh, of course, have their own interest in seeing something which is visually distinctive and gets them into architecture journals. So the, you know, the, the difficulty here um, that was raised by uh, Councillor Ben Isaac is that there's, there's a risk of potential conflict of interest because uh, Triple M Group is kind of in the middle. On the one hand, uh, they're uh, they have a relationship with the architecture firm, uh, which is ongoing, and on the other hand, they're supposed to be representing the city in getting a bridge built which is uh, functional and uh, relatively inexpensive. So um, those things could be at cross purposes, and I'm, I'm uh, wondering if that's the reason why this was identified as a high risk. It's, uh, the city has been lucky in that respect, that the, the, the global economy is, is still pretty flat. There's still uh, a lot of competition out there, so there's likely not going to be uh, a lot of escalation. Um, the, the difficulty is it seems now, and this is why I was curious, you know, why it was flagged at this point, is, is over the actual design itself and whether it can be built for the sum of money. You know, it's not... It's not a worry about the price of steel, it's a worry about what we're going to do with the steel. Well, just the, yeah, the landscaping, I mean, I think that's a, a valuable thing to do. It, it's absolutely necessary. You want the entire area to, to, uh, to look great when the whole thing is finished. But it's, it's pretty cosmetic, you know. Uh, it's $1.3 million. Uh, I don't think that's going to be enough. Uh, they're spending $1.2 million right now just on Fisherman's Wharf Park alone so this is going to be uh, much bigger and more complex and uh, I don't think it's going to be enough money and the other problem is is that it's sort of window dressing to the the big event which is the building of the bridge itself and if that goes over budget there's going to be no money left for landscaping well council has to draw a line in the sand there's there's no question about that they have to say this is uh, you know we we can't continue to indulge sort of greater and greater increases on this and we have to find some alternative uh, the the bind that they're in right now is that it's not possible for them to research any alternatives uh, the staff resources have all been committed to this project and uh, they've been advised by their lawyers that they can't uh, that they jeopardize the discussion with the construction companies if they talk about pursuing other designs. So they can't do that until the, you know, the new numbers come in, uh, the new bids come in. But obviously, I, I wish that back in, in uh, 2010 that people had just voted to, to uh, repair the old bridge. Um, and I think that would have freed up a lot of money to be used for all sorts of other things that need to be done in the city, like replacing Crystal Pool and building a new fire hall and everything else. I mean, that's the uh, one of the reasons for repairing the bridge. Um, so I, we're we're going to have to get used to uh, seeing, you know, this piece, what remains of it, for for uh, a while yet, um, and. If uh, the numbers come in in the fall uh, and they're really off base, uh, who knows? This, this old piece may be sticking around even longer than we ever thought.